Hey everybody, this is Steve. I'm Free Sky, and today I'm talking about the wonderful world of trims. And I'm going to be talking about, um, realistically about plane setups and talk about trims and why we need them. Um, essentially what happens is even when you get your plane set up so perfectly, you've got it set up perfectly on day one and it's flying great and you got it dialed in and everything is perfect and it does everything you could ever dream it to do maybe it was a cool day and um, there wasn't much wind you go out a few days later and it's a warmer day and there's some wind and all of a sudden the plane isn't flying as well as it should um, and all you need to do is give it a little bit of trim and you can get it back to flying great once again um, so the thing that I wanted to talk about as far as ethos is concerned is that there's something set up that's going to catch a lot of people off in, in um, the way that ethos is set up by default. And I wanted to show it to you. And that is right here. We go into trims and each one of these, I'm going to close these all up and I'm going to talk about, um, Let's talk about the throttle trim first of all. The only time you're ever going to use throttle trim is if you're flying something like a glider or a turbine jet. For the most part, most people don't use throttle trim at all. So I would, um, we're not really going to discuss that today. We're going to discuss the other three things, which are actual control surfaces. Um, and I wanted to show you, uh, we'll start off with rudder. And I'll show you that everything here is set to fine. So there's extra fine, fine, medium, coarse. And this is every time you push the trim button, um, extra fine means it does very little, and coarse means it does the most. When you're flying something like a sub microplane where it's small and just minute changes drastically affect the way the, that the control surface works you need to be on extra fine but for most planes that are a meter or, or over I would say course is probably what you want to set everything to so that's the, my first tip right there go in and switch all these over to course and this one's already set up on course okay um, now what happens is the test I like to give is I'll take a plane up and to me trims are not they're transitory. I mean, they'll change day to day. I, I don't have a magic set of trims, um, but uh, what I'll do is I'll take a, a plane up and I'll fly it up to about 250 feet, and then um, I will get it so that the plane's flying straight and level. And then as I, um, here's how I explain it. I, if I'm looking at the stick, so if I'm holding the elevator back. And let's say it's down to the left. What I do is I move the elevator trim the same direction as where I'm holding my fingers to the point where I can let go of the elevator and then it should be flying straight and level. If it's going to the left, if I'm holding it to the left, I'll move the bottom um, aileron trim over to the left so that by the time I'm done with this exercise, it should be flying straight and level. If it's still yawing a bit, then I will move the rudder stick on the left side of the radio and I will move it the opposite direction of the direction it's, it tends to be yawing towards. So if, it's, if the plane is constantly kind of flying to the left, I'll move the rudder to the right. It's a pretty simple tr set of process. Uh, once you do it a few times, you'll get pretty quick at getting the, the plane trimmed. Uh, the, when you're done with the exercise, the plane should, at a comfortable cruising altitude, uh, cruising speed, it should fly straight and level and it should track. You shouldn't be dropping wings, should not be gaining altitude or lowering altitude. Um, but we're going to go back. Oh, one other thing I wanted to show you. Well, uh, back in trims, the very bottom here, uh, when you get down to here, cross trims, this is something some people swear by where what they do is they'll move the trims on the left to the right side of the radio and the trims on the right side of the radio to the left side of the radio. So your rudder 
moves your ailerons and you know what was your your rudder trim is now your aileron trim and what was your throttle trim is now your elevator trim and people tend to like that in the respect that they're able to quickly trim a plane some people find it easier to move the left trims than to try to find the right trims as they're holding the stick um i i don't know whatever works for you the only I don't use this typically I stick with default the danger I see in this is if you have someone else fly your plane and they they can inadvertently do things like turn your uh, throttle up and down and um, when they in reality all they're trying to do is just trim your elevator so uh, be careful with that that's all I'm saying um, we're gonna go back out now and we're gonna look at the home screen and you'll see that these things show like there and here and here and here uh, they all show um, um, where your trims are located you know if you have and what I tend to look for is if you see these trims if you're on course and you see like the trims for let's say the elevator is down here let's you know it's like wow that's way off is there a way to fix that i want to go in there and so get it so permanently i'm not holding the elevator up so the way to do that is to go into outputs find elevator and your setter sub trip and this one it's a negative you might need to ring it up down maybe I don't know start off with five or six if it's way down there you might want to start off with six percent seven percent something like that maybe as high as eight percent so I'm going to say eight percent and what I would do is go back in and adjust your um, elevator trim back to center take it up see if the plane still needs up elevator or down elevator you can go back and adjust your sub trims um, but if it's way off like that you might realistically want to go in and move your clevis so if you want your elevator to go upward so it uh, which is the same as pulling back on the stick uh, what you might need to do is unscrew the clevis so it goes away further away from your nose makes it longer uh, the and you'll see the elevator go up a little bit higher from the horizontal stabilizer and uh, that is uh, a way to mechanically trim the plane and I find that to be the best way to do it I don't if I uh, if when I set up my planes I always make sure that my um, uh, servo arms are at 90 degrees um, and that they're centered at 1500 uh, so you move the control surfaces you don't move the servo arms and uh, that's how you do it is by adjusting the clevis or whatever it is that makes it move up and down and that is it if you have any questions feel free to message me my name is steve i can be reached steve at frsky negative sign rc.com have yourself a great day thanks for watching